Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, another episode of Trade the Chain. So we've got Weston Nelson, Head of Business Development over at uh, TTC. Welcome, Weston. Also got CJ from Market Rebellion, Head of, or part of the Head of Technical Analysis. He is our TA guy. And I'm just here, comedy relief, apparently. So all that all works out is like this. We're gonna find through sentiment analysis, a top pick. That's gonna be Weston's department. Once Weston picks it, it goes over to CJ and he says if the TAs are good or not. Then I take a look at fundamental analysis, but we'll see how that all goes. So let's get this going, see if we can get out of here in under 10 minutes. Weston, what all do right. you got? Sweet, thanks Rob. Uh, you can see my screen? I can see it. Trade the, trade the chain, okay, perfect. So this again, uh, trade chain is the, um, dashboard for sentiment analytics and uh, essentially tracking kind of the pulse of the markets um, before other people. And right now we're in a very unusual market situation, um, but I would be picking Bitcoin. Um, okay, tell us why. So a um, couple of reasons, well, Tesla, obviously, um, okay. but but in there's rumblings of other major corporations also following suit, um, and then we have an increased trading volume of the most tr traded a or asset, pretty significantly. Um, smokes. So how much is that? Yeah. Plus fifteen, plus sixty percent. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, this is a kind of a different one than normal where, you know, I'd be looking at, oh, the one hour projected range or something like that. To me, I'm kind of throwing that out the window here. So that's why, it's, you know, you have to have a little more of a filter too, uh, looking at it a macro perspective. Um, but, you know, we're only up 6% over the last 24 hours. So if we get another big push, uh, this could easily hit, hit you know, a bust through the 50 uh, resistance. Gotcha. So just so everybody knows, let me let, let me take that control real quick. Let me share my screen. The things that we have looked at in the past are not big projects like that. Usually what we look at, uh, we use sentiment analysis just to take a look at what's really going on. We've made picks here of Maker, Reserve RT, Synthetics, Loopling, and Orchid, not things that are like really high up. It's just that today, that is just what it falls into. And if that's what the data shows us and tells us, then that's the way we're going to go. Now, let's look at what CJ's got as far as the technicals, because, I mean, can we keep running up seriously? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Especially due to the fact that we just broke above some critical resistance at around uh, 45K. Now, okay. I want to draw your guys' attention to the one hour time frame, a little bit of a more micro time frame to start. But you can see we hit the sequential cell nine on the one hour. And so that would make me hesitant to jump in a long trade uh, right as that uh, candle occurred. I was kind of expecting us to go down and touch this middle Keltner channel because that's typically characteristic of where we find support in these bull markets and run-ups in the interim. Um, so far, it seemed that this top Keltner channel has been sufficient to form as support on the one-hour chart. And you can see we're already breaking out to almost new all-time highs when you judge it by the candle body close on the one-hour time frame. So this is already hitting a breakout level for me. But just to be safe, I'd put it at the top of this TD sequential uh, nine, uh, the setup trend line right there, which is equates to a price of 48300 roughly. So I would wait for that as a trigger entry. Um, but this is looking good. Confirmation. It's looking bullish. And then just uh, something that I want to talk about, and I often talk about this a lot on Trade the Chain, is just a more weekly perspective of Bitcoin. And my thesis essentially has been, if we can remain and close this week above 45K, and that is the rest, the three days and four hours remaining, if we can close above 45K in that amount of time, I think it is very, very likely that we can see the next Fibonacci resistance level at approximately 62K in the next two or three weeks. I think that's very doable. That would be approximately a 28% increase from our current point. Um, but, you know, I want to see us hit that breakout level for the entry trigger first before we do that. So looking gotcha. good. 
I agree with Weston, and uh, this is something you like the charts. Okay. Yeah. So, so just to make sure, because that's probably gonna be the thumbnail. If we hit, if we can stay above 45k for the until the end of this week, then we can go. We can maybe hit 62k within the next two weeks. Yeah, two or three, you know, conservatively. Uh, <laughs> but that's the key metric that I've been that I've been watching and talking okay. about excessively. Give me a and, favor. And, and there's the unexpected bombshell that could be dropped at any point. Which is, what do you think it is, Weston? What have you heard? Um, I mean, like a Tesla, you know, coming Tesla. out of nowhere. Oh, another, another yeah. Tesla? Another Tesla. Yeah, not another Tesla, but a, another, you know, company saying, hey, we have purchased a billion dollars of Bitcoin. Um, you know what? Very so, possible. Yeah, there's two things. In today's video, I, I talked, there was a video I watched from Meet Kevin, and he talked about, the uh, tax oh, implications. Me, Kevin. Yeah, me, Kevin. And, uh, and he was talking about Bitcoin and why they did these things. And there was these there, there was specific language because they're a corporation. And really what it came down to, I'll, I'll, I'll boil the whole 20 minute video down in like a couple sentences. All it came down to is that they will win no matter if Bitcoin goes down or Bitcoin goes up. It is the ultimate hedge. And if other corporations don't see it like that, they're obviously, they're completely blind. So I'll-, I'll let Yeah, they haven't watched the playbook. It's, it's funny because we've seen that today with Uber. Yeah. Right. Oh my uh, God. Down about three percent after their executives announced that you know we looked at Bitcoin, but we're not going to do anything with it, and Freak so down. people sold their stock off. So that's, we're already seeing it. It's pretty interesting. That's crazy, right? It's it's the same thing. Like when when Tesla bought it, their stock went up what five percent, and it, and it was it was the same thing when uh, Spotify so hired I, Joe Rogan. They part, they paid him hundred million, and they went up like seven eight percent in like a day. So doing these things are smart. I see it like this. Oh, and there was one more thing. Uh, the last time we, we did this uh, Trinity trading, there was a couple of uh, feedbacks and they said, what they'd like to see is do a little bit of training, a little bit of teaching. So I'm gonna start with CJ. I have a question. I, have no, I know absolutely nothing about those charts. Show us what that was about, or, or just teach us one thing. We'll, we'll start there. Cause that, that one part where you said the uh, sequential nine, I'm like, oh, what the hell that is. Yeah, I okay. Yeah, that's a fault of mine as well. I kind of go over that stuff a little bit uh, too quickly. Um, but if there, this is the most valuable aspect um, that I use in trading. So I guess I will teach it to you guys. Um, there was an individual named Tom DeMarc who created the sequential indicator, and that's these numbers above the candlesticks that we're looking at. And so, what determines whether or not a candlestick remains green or red is whether it closes above or below the candle four candles prior. So I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but let's count the candles together, right? So why is this a red one? Well, if we go four candles prior, one, two, three, four, we can see that this red one candle closed below the green six candle. So there we experience something called a price flip to a red one. And so that's a way we can sort of gauge momentum. And I think the greatest efficacy comes into the sequential indicator when you hit these TD cell nines. So when you reach a nine, uh, that means that we've had nine consecutive candles that have closed above the candle four candles prior. And when we hit that, that's typically an indication that we're going to see a, a sell-off or at least just a temporary take profit zone. And the same is true if we get a red nine. Um, I don't have an example here for you off the top of my head. But that's the general thesis. And so um, this is a free indicator. You can find the code uh, on the internet and available. But uh, that's probably the most important aspect of the technical indicators I look at. So I, I got you. So just because so we and said like on, like. on what time frames? Yeah, good question. Well, like, what is most effective? Because I know it, it works on really uh, one hour. It works hour, on all hour. time frames. Yeah. It works on all time frames. One thing I'll say as a generalization, when we're looking at TA and what I look like to look for, I like to look at a green number on the one hour, the one day, the four hour, and the weekly. If we get a unison and a confluence between green numbers on all of those time frames, it's a really bullish sign. Say we're on like green all over, but say on the one hour we're reaching a red nine or a green nine, then I'll wait for the uh, temporary reversal period to pass, then enter into whatever direction I was thinking about. For me, the
The four hour and the daily are my favorite, but like I said earlier, this indicator and pretty much any technical indicator can be used across all time frames. Perfect. That's Not why that's why last time we did Orchid, you said, let's wait for confirmation. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I just bought it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you, 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 did, you did end up getting a better deal, a little bit. Yeah, that's because true. Of, because yeah. of your, your bold decision. Okay. And then Weston, you got one thing for us. Teach us one thing about uh, yeah. TC. Um, yeah. So if I can teach you one thing, um, basically data science, right? It's a field that emerged about 12 years ago or whenever. Big rise of big data. Um, natural language processing is a form of artificial intelligence that scrapes the web mm -hmm. and determines the sentiment of the text. And by using that, you can quantify positive and negative things um, to accurately forecast you know, within a relevant range price predictions. It's an incredible new tactic for using um, or evaluating potential investments or trades for a new asset class. So um, that's exactly what we're doing when we have these ranges. It's like, where do these come from? It's coming from the, the, the AI scraping the web um, and just spitting out data. So, okay. all right. Perfect. So what we'll do here is I've, I've already talked about uh, Bitcoin and buying Bitcoin. I said I wouldn't buy anything over 30K. So I think it, I think that there's there's some retracement to happen right there. However, we're talking about trading and swing trading and day trading. So there's a little bit different. So I will put in 50 bucks a day. I will buy it on Voyager and we'll see how we do. And then uh, if it's not right, then I got to blame. I have to blame myself. That's how it comes down to. There's a new motto when trading this market, Rob. You know, typically in Wall Street, you say buy low, sell high. In crypto, yeah. it's buy high, sell higher. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I like With that. With Bitcoin. With, With Bitcoin. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, so we'll wrap it up here. I'll put it on there. And just as a reminder for you watching at home, there's going to be two links. Uh, one's going to talk about trade the chain underneath. If you want to take a look at that, there'll be a link in the description. Also, what CJ was talking about as far as TA and TA trading. There's also a link for that uh, underneath and I will link in the description as well. I will buy Bitcoin. It'll be, uh, it is today. What is today? It is February 11th, 1.30. Yeah, 1.30 Mountain Time, uh, 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern. So I will mark it on the uh, spreadsheet that I showed you in originally. That's also in the description so you can track this trade. Hopefully CJ is right and we get to 62K. Hopefully, hopefully. And we'll yeah, go I, I really hope so too. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. If you like that video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing because, hey, everything's time sensitive and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Thanks.